that's my boy. Hey guys, welcome to today's episode of What's in the Box. We don't have but just a few things, but stay tuned. Here comes What's in the Box. We got a couple of things going on. We actually got a big box right here, but I got a couple of small things. We'll start with those and we'll just see what we got going on. Alright, so this is just like a stocking item. I got some four inch V bands just to have them. I don't know that we'll ever, ever need those, but I was doing some shopping and I keep running into not having a few things and then we've got a couple of other projects where we got down the road and so I found a good deal on them and I just picked up a couple of four inch V-bands and see what's in the bag. Another bag. Alright, so there's the three inch V-bands. The three inch V-bands were supposed to be, I think they were going to fit the BMW, I didn't ever measure, I was assuming that they were three inch, but I went ahead and just used the ones that were there, and so I don't need them anyway, but at the same time, you can always use, if you're into turbos or anything involving any kind of turbo cars, you can always use three inch V-bands, so got three inch and four inch. You never know, just have some extra stuff here. So, uh, there's a brand called Arm. And they deal in performance accessories. I think it's like Arm Motorsports maybe. Let's just get it unpacked here. Let's just go all in, we'll get everything out of the box. And, wouldn't you know it, more V-bands. And some hardware. Okay. So, what the deal was, I ordered a cheap knockoff brand intercooler. Okay, now when I ordered this intercooler, it says we'll fit 09 BMW. 335 XI. Well, doesn't fit. What the deal was, the diameter of the actual charge pipes where they install onto the intercooler, oh my good lord, were not the same size. Yeah, this one is actually, if you notice, this isn't the step design, how it doesn't have. The last one we opened, it had like the extra lip that like came out. So like if it was this way, it had just a thin lip on it. Well, that was a five inch stepped intercooler. This is a seven inch. So this is actually a whole lot more intercooler than what I actually had. And this one was more of a performance brand and actual, an actual brand. You can actually replace the coupling that goes on this side that goes up to where your charge pipe is, where your, you know, it goes into your throttle body if you've dealt with the 335i's. Well, you can replace that plastic, that hard plastic with this boot. And so you actually it comes with this and you V-band it on. So now you change your intercooler and you've replaced that entire piece, that plastic piece that goes all the way up to your charge pipe and it just boots on to your charge pipe. So you do away with the hard plastic boot or the hard plastic coupler, you know, the piece that goes up to your actual charge pipe. And on this side, you have a flexible deal and this actually does away with that. And so now you've added an aftermarket boot in place of that, which I would say would hold a lot more boost than what your factory parts will, will go. 
And so if I go the, <coughs> excuse me, if I go to the stage two plus on the MHD, as long as my high pressure fuel pump doesn't fail, or my low pressure fuel pump, or my coals, or any of that stuff, which does fail, once you start cranking them up, then I should be good on you know my my car not running too hot. So the main thing I'm worried about right now is just keeping the car from running too hot. I'm still waiting on the water line for the uh, reservoir and all that stuff. Wait, I bought a new reservoir and that new line that connects across, that bridges across to the, the actual driver's side to the, and it couples underneath your charge pipe. So I took all that stuff off and I'm waiting on that part. I probably still will actually have to get it from the bottom, but I can't install it and all the boots because I think the boots will be in the way. I might be able to put the intercooler in, but I'm afraid the actual boot will be in the way. And so I'm going to leave just everything off. And once I get that water line installed correctly, then I'll put the intercooler and the charge pipe and all that stuff in. Until then, I think it's supposed to be here Monday. It's actually Friday now. This is one of the major, major components when you start doing the um, uh, turning up the different stages on the MHD if you run that or if you run any of the other programmers. The intercooler and your downpipes are a big, big part of that. So what I'm actually going to do, mine's on the stage one, not the one plus, not the two or two plus. Mine's on the stage one with zero bolt-ons, uh, the way that MHD reads. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it on stage one initially and I'm going to put my intercooler and my charge pipes is that all I got? Well, I'll repair the water leak. And so get all that done and leave it on the stage one and see if I can tell a difference on just the stage one initially because what I was used to driving the car in you know, factory and then I bought the MHD and I put the stage one, I could tell a difference with, the only thing I added was the air intakes, but I did that before I got the, the MHD stuff. Well, when I got the MHD stuff and, and I went to the stage one, that doesn't require any bolt-ons, I could tell quite a bit of difference. It's not like, oh my God, it's the, you know, the fastest car ever, but I could tell that it done something. Uh, when I had a Subaru, I couldn't tell that it done that much. But now, once I change these parts out, I get to see if I leave it on the stage one, I can see the difference that just these parts made. So if, if it makes a su substantial difference, and keep it on the stage one. If you have just a car with no upgrades um, and you don't do the computer, so if you decide to do the bolt-ons, which is the the charge pipes and the, or not the charge pipe, but the uh, down pipes, the catalyst down pipes, and the intercooler, what kind of power, what kind of difference will you see? Um, yeah, so this is actually not the base five inch stepped intercooler. This is the seven inch. And they actually, they've changed the design of where the couplings go. So this still receives the clamps. So if you don't get the coupling kit, this still receives your factory clamps. So this should lock right into your factory clamps without having to buy this. But to guarantee fitment, I decided that I'm gonna go ahead and buy these deals and so that way, it doesn't matter whether they clip or not, I can boot them onto the factory. And this one completely replaces that one, so it has to work. It goes up to the charge pipe, and the charge pipe it's gonna be the three inch or whatever. This one, at worst case, it's different, and I just have to get another boot to replace it. But these are designed a little different than the factory lock-on ones. With, uh, they're supposed to be more able to accept a coupling. It's designed to accept a coupling more freely. So it, in theory, this brand is supposed to, you know, have the edge on being able to run a coupling without having any kind of air leaks or issues once you couple up. So they're, they're um, on their post, it's saying that they can't guarantee that if you use their couplings with a different intercooler, that it will seal. So that may or may not be an issue that you'll have, but if you were getting, buying an intercooler and you were thinking about doing the boots, you might as well get it all at one place so you know that you, you know, it's less likely to to leak. And if you do, you can call them and you know figure out what the deal is.
So, but either way, what was in the box is a couple of V-band clamps, which I got more V-band clamps for this setup, and Arm has sent me a new 7-inch intercooler. I'm pretty excited, man. I think this car is going to be nasty when I, I mean, because it's impressive. I watched a video last night where a guy did the intercooler, the down pops, he ended up having to change the high flow, high pressure fuel pump because it went out on him. But this guy made 460. These cars come out factory 300, you know, to the crank now. And this is 460 dyno, so, you know, that's uh, that's 500 horse. So, and that was on a stage two plus. And then he went to ethanol, he'd done an E85 blend, and then now he's at four eighty something, 490 something, and the, and the torque was 495. So 500 horse, so that's 530, 40, 540 to the wheels. That's pretty impressive to just bolt on a few accessories and programmer and, and go with it. That's pretty impressive. So, but all right, either way, that's what's in the box. Sorry to drug on, but I got a lot of information and there's a lot going on. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed today's video. If you will, like, subscribe, hit the little bell as usual. And if you need to email us about anything, it's Chesser Enterprises at yahoo.com. We're on Instagram at Chesser Drifting, and I think Chesser Enterprises as well. We're Chesser Motorsports on Facebook. Hey guys, we, we, we really appreciate you watching our videos. All right, thanks guys, we'll see you down the road.